Right, now we're going to deal with water rushing and bubbling over a whole series of rocks, if you like, the typical mountain stream, with lots of little mini waterfalls as it finds its way from up in the hills down towards the sea. But the good news is that much bigger waterfalls are produced in exactly the same way as you produce these little waterfalls here. In fact, this could be the Niagara Falls, if you like, and the techniques, by and large, would be exactly the same. Now, this is a lovely little woodland scene, complete with a little pack horse bridge over the river, so you can see a couple of little uh, eddies and waterfalls through the bridge, and then a couple more as we come down to the foreground. First of all, I'm going to simplify the picture quite considerably. Certainly in relation to these trees in the background, and most certainly we're going to take this uh, slightly messy area out here. If we take a piece of uh, plastic, I was going to take a piece of acetate, but I didn't have one handy. This will do just as well. Now, all that I've done is, if I just line that up like that, all that I've done, you can see, is to draw a series of straight red lines, very important obviously with water, to keep it horizontal at all times. And that, those simple red lines like that, will give you the basis of your composition. It's not difficult then to draw the letter C, or a couple of letter C's, on its face, and put in a few random shapes here, which are mostly sort of triangular shapes of the rocks coming in from the side. And when you're painting water, the main thing to remember is less is more. In other words, the less paint you put on the waterfall area, other than the little bits of shadow, and the more you leave as white paper, the more effective it's going to look. So I'm going to put some masking fluid on here, and then we'll get on with the painting. Right, now the picture has a lot of yellows and browns and golds in, which suggests to me that it's an early autumn day, especially the fact there's a lot of leaves lying on the top of the rocks here. So I'm going to reflect that in the colours I'm going to use. Right, so we've got that area nice and damp, and all I'm doing is just very, very quickly putting in a medium tone of pale blue into that area. Now you've seen a similar technique when we did the tree in blossom in the trees video. It's the same sort of technique really. Right, next stage is to dampen the bridge area, including the inside of the archway. I'm going to put some fairly dark colour on this bridge eventually, so I don't want that to uh, go all over the tree. Having wet this, what we're going to do now is just drop in some burnt umber, like that. I'm going to introduce a little bit of blue here and there, that harlequin kaleidoscope of colours, as it looks like you've got here at the moment, will actually tone down. Now under the bridge it's going to be much darker, but for now I'm just going to just flood in a base coat of burnt umber. Right, I'm going to paint the base colours of the rocks now, a mix of burnt umber and raw sienna. That's just going to give me a nice, fairly bright underlying coat, and we'll put some much stronger darks and shadows on later on. Right, now I'm also adding some ultramarine blue at the base of some of these rocks, and on the shadow side. Just going to put a greeny sort of grey up here in the background. Next up is a very strong mix of burnt umber and ultramarine and that's giving us that shadow colour underneath the bridge itself. Now that'll certainly help these light areas around it to stand out. Notice I put some neat ultramarine there. It gives an added interest to the bridge and also helps to darken the, the roof area, and I'll also put some little nicks. You can see I'm doing that because that will represent the shadows between those vertical stones that form the archway of the bridge. But what I want to do is just to paint in some of these trees that are sitting in the background. Perhaps do that a little bit stronger because that's going to be silhouetted against the sky. Right, I've put a little hint of ultramarine blue and some burnt umber, very pale wash, just at the base of the trees, really so we get a light against dark effect when I take that masking fluid off the top of the bridge. And we'll use the number one brush, I think, to get this 
quickly get this darker branch in here. Right now we'll put some very strong burnt umber in the shadow side of the tree. We'll add a little bit of blue I think, make it stronger still. Right that tree nicely frames the bridge which in turn frames the water so I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave that as it is. Right I've added some areas of pale ultramarine blue on its own just in some of these areas where I want to pick up the reflection of the water in the sky and I've used the flat brush for this and all I've done is just scrape the colour on like that. I'll show you what I mean by just doing this pool here. What I want to do is just simply just pick up some little hit and miss effect here like that and you can see how good the flat brush is at doing that. I'm trying to imitate and replicate how I think the water would be pushing itself from two directions here. There's perhaps a, a fairly strong colour. Well I can go over that can't I because I'm just going over the masking fluid so I don't have to worry about that. Take that down like that and all you can do, all I'm doing you can see is just simply scraping that brush sideways and in doing so it gives a lovely sparkle to the water without any effort whatsoever. While that's still damp I'm just going to put some darker colour in there because that's quite dark where it picks up the reflection of these uh, rocks. So a fairly strong colour, not a huge amount of water in it. But that'll do fine for the area underneath the bridge that's going to run in to the light area that we've painted for the sky. Now I'm putting a dark area here because I want to create the impression of this area here being an overhanging rock and creating shadows on the water like that. That's a nice little bit of added character to an area that often happens but you don't always see get painted. All that I've done here is just crisscrossed here and there with different colours and different strengths of colour. Always remembering that I want to keep some sunlight particularly on this side where the rocks are catching the light.